Uh, and please make your panel feel very, very welcome. We have our moderator, Manu, Alex, Chelsea, and Antonio. Thank you for being here today with us, guys. For sure. Um, this is a topic that I'm really, really interested in, um, mainly because privacy is really, really tough when it comes to having some sort of business model, when it comes to actually making money. So we're gonna talk about, um, from the investor perspective, you guys uh, as investors, um, how you see the space um, in terms of privacy, in terms of um, all of this new technology that, that we're creating. Um, but before that, let's start with a quick introduction of yourselves. Yeah, thank you, Manu. Uh, I'm Antonio de la Esperanza. I'm, uh, as you can see by my color shirt, I'm a lawyer. So uh, ho hopefully <laughs> I will provide some value, but uh, I work at Bitcoin Ventures. Uh, we are a venture capital fund focused on the gaming industry, gaming and entertainment in the broad sense. And we have a couple of funds that invest in token projects, basically. Um, hi, guys. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, so I'm Chelsea. I'm working with a fund called Foresight Ventures. We are mainly a Web3 token fund. Um, so, like, uh, we invest a lot of things, especially privacy is one of our thesis as well. Like, we actually had some investments. Um, privacy, or like, in general, we invest in everything across different, like, sectors. Uh, it's like, but we, we both cover both kind of, like, protocol layers or different sectors, device, social, everything. And I spend most of my time, like, looking into infrastructure, and privacy has been something we've been looking at interesting for a while as well. Yeah, hi guys, my name is Alex and I'm founder of GodBit. We're a hedge fund, we are a market maker and we have our venture arm. So we invest only in utility tokens and we support a lot of ZK projects right now and uh, projects which are working especially on privacy thing. Awesome, thank you so much guys. So do you, get, do you all have um, in your portfolio uh, privacy related companies, mm -hmm. all of you? Uh, I do. Perfect, okay so um, let's start with the first question. So how can inv investors balance the need for privacy with the potential lack of profitability or basically unclear business models? Um, do any of you have, do any of you have uh, an answer to that? Uh, yeah, I, I can take this first. So basically the most things we see, like Alio or like a lot of layer one, layer two Aztec is wasting a lot of in infrastructure, right? Because first of all, providing privacy is really hard. Like, we don't have privacy on chain. If it's on chain, it's public, it's transparent. So that's why like, we see a lot of, lot of technology or infrastructure trying to build a privacy layer. And that's why I also see like, a lot of zero knowledge because it's, there's a lot of privacy computing methods, but zero knowledge is most, um, it's like the, the, it's one of the methods that they can actually like, you know, uh, like realize can be like implemented. So that's why we see a lot of zero knowledge solutions in that. So infrastructure layer is very obvious for both like investors and like founders to see it. But it's also very hard in general to build a protocol or build like using zero knowledge. And then like we can like, you know, that's like very easy. And the other thing we might see is like maybe DeFi, maybe social, maybe gaming. So DeFi is like, it's, we see a lot of privacy transfer, tornado cash and stuff, uh, but it, it is kind of hard uh, right now in DeFi, giving regulation and stuff. But we do think like in terms of gaming, uh, in terms of social, there actually can be something to be explored in terms of privacy. Uh, it's like, you know, maybe a private group or in social or just like, you know, uh, private, um, gaming instead of like, you know, like this kind of hidden map and stuff going on. So it is something we are interested and we're looking forward to see in terms of like actually applications or use cases in social or DeFi or maybe something I haven't thought about. So I think there is a lot of stuff that can be like imagined actually. Okay, so, so you're basically investing in this type of technology with the idea that something can come out, out of it that we might not necessarily know about? Yeah, yeah I, I want to add that, uh, for instance, we support one of the projects, which is sol really solving one of the privacy problem. It's more simple. It's a problem when you have like company and you need to pay salary to 100 people and you need to pay the salary in crypto. Uh, and it's a problem oh because everyone in crypto, <laughs> everyone in your company will check other wallets, will check how much uh, the colleges earn. And it's a big problem, to be honest. Huge yeah. problem. <laughs> so the project we support, more as a market maker, they already launched and everyone can use it. 
it's called Bob, and you can send crypto to using ZK, oh, so yeah, yeah, no yeah. one can figure out really wallet of each other. And it's amazing tech. So like company has a wallet, but it's sending like privately and no one in on chain can track how much his colleague earn. Those are the guys behind uh, behind the initial Gnosis. Yeah, uh, yeah. Chain, it's the right? guy it's the guy who, who exited through his company from Gnosis. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So So um, I mean we, we invest in real in real problems. So I think uh, by our venture arm we invest in projects which try to solve not like global problems, but real problem. And uh, that kind of problem is real. Because in our company, we have 150 people. And it's, it's tough when, when your traders and your sales try to negotiate how much they earn. And it brings a lot of like, you know, crisis and chaos <laughs> inside, the, inside the company. Totally. I actually have seen a lot of drama within DAOs as well. Oh, really? uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> been, it's been a little bit um, difficult to see. You know, like sometimes people use um, just being humans. <laughs> yeah, but DAOs are supposed to be transparent, no? And Sorry? DAOs are supposed to be transparent, so, you know, it's, I think it's part of the... In, in case of salaries, for example, yeah. which I know it's like a big topic. DAO and well, copper is kind of different well, yeah. structure, though. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually seeing, like, different models with DAOs. Like, I'm seeing, like, a DAO that is actually kind of, like, hiring other sub-DAOs. And those sub-DAOs, they have their own way of managing themselves, and also they have their own payroll. And so you have, like, a... Um, let's say a legal wrapper for the marketing team, a legal wrapper for um, also for, let's say, the business team or another legal wrapper for the developer uh, side. Um, and each of them is kind of like managing their own salaries uh, privately. So that, that's kind of like the hack that I've been seeing yeah. doing. <laughs> you see a lot of like DAO tools or like payroll management and stuff going on because they're kind of outsourcing it. It's because like DAO, <laughs> they can't take on too much problems at the same time. So they outsource a lot of like stuff in, all, in a way to like a SaaS model to a lot of like I mean the, the, the legal issue surrounding DAOs is just non-ending for now. Um, you know, trying to create a legal wrapper may not be useful for how the protocol or how the DAO is, wants to work. And, and yes, that's what I'm seeing now, like just se three or four several DAOs. One will have the payroll, another marketing, another. We, we invested in a company that basically is like a challenger for UFC. And they have a weird system in which, you know, it, they're selling tokens, but it's not a security. And we can get into what a security is for the US and that's something. So, but they're kind of externalizing everything, but I think everything is public for them. But, you know, there can be a lot of. But, but, but coming back to the, the, the initial question, um, are you guys investing into privacy related projects because you think that there's something that you might haven't thought of uh, that can come out, out of these, let's say, out of these privacy related projects because you're mainly investing I guess in the infrastructure ledger right now right um, so what do you guys think about that is that is that framing that I'm saying is that correct a correct framing or is not necessarily a correct framing or what's your vision when you're investing into these projects that might not necessarily have a direct business model or a direct way of extracting money right away so I, I think there is a little bit of both. I think we're seeing things that we may want to uh, see develop, but we're also looking, I mean, in gaming is very obvious, right? So you have a profile in a PlayStation and you give a lot of information. Uh, so being able to kind of protect your information and decide when and how to share that. And then, you know, depending on the business model, receiving some compensation for that. I think that's a, a real case scenario that, that we're looking at, especially, you know, Meta and Google breaching all the European uh, privacy laws and getting fined. So there are actual business models that can work now, mm. uh, or even though, the, you know, the, we're, they're building for the future. And then we may be seeing something that is more far ahead and more like, you know, illusionary of how things we, th we think should develop for, for the gaming industry. Yeah, I'm asking this question is because, you know, like uh, when I discovered Ethereum, like, there was nothing built on top of it, right? It was like <laughs> yeah. the very, very beginning. Um, so I think it's more of like different types of investors. Like uh, that's who the, I like, you know, there are investors who may like also depends on your time frame. I might need like a report in a year. Like that's why I might like focus more areas on like profitability or revenue. I might invest in like the future technology. So I, I have time like five to 10 years. So I can right. invest something like, you know, big potential, 
low certainty. So I would say like, you know, profitability and time frames, like how, like infrastructure, I brought it up because there's more certainty in a way that, you know, privacy is needed or, you know, you, you think more like, sure, there's a profitability, like a business model that's very apparent or easy to purchase, or easy to use. But like you define social, it's like unclear. Like you don't know, or you could like have SaaS or you could have like revenue, but you don't necessarily know what you can. You could be, you could building a good product, but you probably not gonna see making profit in maybe in one year's time frame. So it depends on the the time frame and the profitability. It's also just like how you would value like the like the tech or potential or certainty. Like I just I think it depends. Yeah, and for us, when we invest, it's also important revenue stream. So can a project really generate revenue stream and recurring revenue stream in the future? And if it's privacy-based project based on token, token business model with utility, usually 95% of that project, they don't have any kind of recurring revenue stream. They have just model with like maybe buyback or like selling their tokens or making NFT collections or in terms of privacy, it's only like token-based or DAO. It's not very, how to say, Mm, sustainable model for the long term and you can see from all like token charts that it's not sustainable uh, that's why maybe we skip a lot of privacy projects right now especially because founders of privacy projects they try to raise money using token model but initially they don't need token inside their business you know it's it's like they they just implement token to raise quick money from so the, they're trying to force uh, a token just for the sake of the racing yeah, yeah. So uh, it's like, but, but the token usage is like, we will have a DAO, we will have a stake, and that's it. But it's very simple setup. It's not a... Yeah, I think it's really, you have to make it clear, like, making money and making a token doesn't have to be the same thing. <laughs> you can make money, but you don't have to use your token. Like, it's fine. And a lot of investors do invest like, in just revenue generating or equity and stuff. It's like, I actually sometimes want to ask, like, do you actually need a token? Do you, where do you see your token in this like, user flow or user experience? Like, you don't have to use your token to make money. Like, and uh, also it can be good, good business as well. I mean, especially for infrastructure, I'm sorry, especially for infrastructure businesses that, you know, you can go to corporates and get just, yeah. get them as clients. And, and I think that the problem with the token is I, I don't think the users are there to make, you know, a sustainable token model yet. Like, we need billions there to, in order to, to ensure token flow, to ensure revenues. Uh, and I don't think we're there yet. We're, we're working towards it, but. Yeah, totally. I, I also think that we're very, very ready for it. <laughs> um, what are the key privacy, security, and decentralization challenges uh, faced by the current centralized systems? So I think that one of the main is a uh, single point of failure and also, of course, uh, data leaks from the system. So it's two main uh, problems and blockchain can solve it uh, using the nodes to collect data and to provide data th through the validators like uh, Filecoin and other systems ba based on this design. Um, so I think in general there's a lot of risk. It's like, it's like so you have custody, you can have custody. So if you have a lot of data and information, it's really, really difficult to keep it safe, to keep it from attack, to keep it like losing and stuff. We see like, you know, we see like web two companies have, who have so much money, resources and experience to, to keep all the information, still lose to hacks, to those technical problems and stuff. So it is like, um, centralized exchange, like it's they're almost always like the single point of failure and they try and but like the thing it, the good thing about centralized or like you know web2 is like they have a lot of practice they have a lot of experience so they, they kind of know what's what's like ahead of them but in web3 is like uh that's like kind of things interesting is like if it's decentralized it might be better but it might be worse like i actually don't know like and also we don't have an experience. We're experimenting ourselves. That's why you see all the DeFi hacks. That's why you see all the data and information because I think we're still learning and it's kind of like long way to go. We're still early. Yeah, no, I mean, for, for sure, the central point of failure, I think it's the biggest risk. Um, and you know, the, I think that decentralization provides trust in a system that has traditionally failed users and, and, the, and how they protect your data. Yeah. Um, we are, you know, we are creating these trustless systems, but sometimes trust is needed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, trust is needed. Um, and I want to ask you, uh, how can decentralized technology enable individuals to, to have greater control over their personal data, over all the information that they have, 
Um, and yeah, basically, how can they protect it? And uh, I don't know if you guys have any, I mean, any ideas. The, the promise is that you will be able to control what is shared, with whom is shared, and that you will be able to decide what I like, and you'll get kind of the, a little bit of the profit of, of doing that sharing. No, I, I, I am not super deep into uh, specific tools, but I haven't seen anything that actually allows me to say, okay, you're getting a request from this uh, protocol or whatever to share this data. Do you want to sign it? Um, Google yeah. Sheets. <laughs> I mean, Google Sheets. Um, Sorry, say that again? Google Sheets, you can request to see some information, edit some information. It's like under Google, though. It's all yeah. information. It's <laughs> like, like within Google. Like they can just shut down or open whatever. It's centralized. So the main issue is because it's centralized, is it? Um, it's centralized because like, essentially like in Web2, you're just exchanging the services with your data, with your own personal data, and you don't get paid. You're basically, you're the product. Right um, in Web two, in Web three is like you could still be the product, but the thing is you might. <laughs> <laughs> you are the product, probably. You are the product. Um, you might have ownership, and you might have you could have ownership, and you could have like potential benefit from the data you're providing, and that's one thing I've been interested in is like the the ownership of the data. But the thing is like there's also kind of different la layers, right? Like you can have like data infrastructure layer to kind of ensure that the data is like private or data is like owned by you. Also they can be like you know different middleware like decentralized by ID or like social graph and stuff. It can be like an NFT and stuff. Uh it it's I think we, we are getting there in terms of ownership, but in terms of like interaction and how you monetize, it's still kind of under exploration, I guess. But if we talk about infrastructure, so like, mm -hmm. for example, like Polygon or BNB chain or like other chains, not like main one, they're very centralized. So I mean, if like Google Sheets or other services where you collect data in Web2, they're using the same infrastructure as Amazon Web Services or Azure as uh, this layer one, layer two blockchains. And uh, y like Polygon, they have how many? Four? Four stakers? Yeah. So like it's really same centralized right now, I mean. I agree. I, I guess there's two dimensions, right? Like, first of all, they are centralized, like Polygon and BNG pretty much do. But there's another thing I think I would kind of consider like more up to because it's more permissionless. Yeah. Like, you, you can actually participate. But even we do see a strong tendency, like, in general, for like going centralized because of POW or POS. But yeah, I think permissionless is also very interesting because, like, you actually have a chance to participate and join the ecosystem and to have a share of the pie or something. We have many people saying, don't give users what they need, give them what they want. Yeah. What, what is it that you want? What do you want? Yeah, I guess if, if I'm packed and shipped, uh, I want, uh, I guess, know where I'm going and get a little bit of the revenue. I think that's, that's the promise. Uh, coming back to privacy, what do you want? I, I, I think that I, I would unpack that sentence in two ways. It's like, what you want is easier to predict as humans. It's like, you want blue, you want lazy, you let, want like, you know. Let's, let's not go um, to, too philosophical. Yeah. Let's go more applications. That's what application do you want? Uh, you, you mentioned, I want to I wanna be able to control my own data. How does that look like? I want to be able to control my... Uh, the contacts that I have, is it like a contacts application where I'm going to add all the contacts and I'm going to, you say, share with this contact my Twitter, share with this contact my Instagram, maybe with this one my OnlyFans, maybe with this one. Uh, how would that look like? I actually or don't think users want to control their data. Like, so what, what, well, I actually don't because no, I'm lazy. Like, no users. Let's not <laughs> think about users. What do you want? As in? As in privacy. Okay, I, I can I, I can I can tell you what I w I think I want because I yeah. haven't experienced. But uh, let's say I go to a bar, and uh, you know now they say okay you have to be 18, give me your ID, and you say okay here's my name, here's my date of birth, here's my address, here's my everything. Then in Spain the name of your father and your mother, and I want to be able to say okay here's my digital ID. You just need to check that I'm over 18, and it's a red and green uh, for example application that says okay you're good to go and you come in that's something that I think I would want now perfect yeah. what else do you want 
I don't want people to know my like my address or know my uh, you know my my passport number or something like that. But like at the same time, I kind of appreciate a little bit personalization in, based on my history. So it's a very combined stuff. Correct. Actually, it's yeah. not like I don't want to share my legal or like my you know personal history or whatever. But like also be like, oh, I can see this is like this is actually I want. I will be appreciate. But that's a very tricky line. It's like that's the recommend recommendation in general, like AI and stuff. Like the the thing is, you have to have data or your history in order to know personalized. But at the same time, like how do you like keep away from like things people don't want to share mm, so you're thinking about ckml ML, ML that's like actually one of the promises is like you know you yeah. don't keep the you don't know the what exactly it is but you kind of know like what's the like it's relevant yeah. yeah like that's like zero knowledge point of like you don't actually know what's it but you know the the answer you know like the result yeah, what I want is a hedge fund. I want that my wallets will be not tracked on Uniswap, on uh, PancakeSwap <laughs> when we trade. But from opposite side, it's the main feature of blockchain to be transparent. So it's a little bit difficult to have right now. Yeah, but I think in the future, some ZK, some layer two, they will like accept this, and we just need to drive liquidity in. Have you guys thought about um, the CK AI uh, type of thing? <laughs> It, DKI is like combining the two of the hottest words right now. <laughs> it's not. It is funded. It is, but <laughs> but it's important to say that um, you're asking your AI overlords, and your overlords know everything that you're asking them, right? AI, a, so AI is like AI is very data intensive, and th like there's actually there's potential use case for ZK AI because like ZK is actually one of ways to providing to protect your privacy, to protect your data, while giving you like seamless or good user experience. So th this is like, your knowledge is very in general, it's like, you, you know, you can just think of it as like a privacy pr preserving technology, and AI is one of the use cases we were speaking a lot. So like, there could be like potential like combination of the two. It's, I, I think it's hype, but at the same time, it is like actual technology that can be used. In my personal opinion, I think that is necessary. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, Imagine that you are um, that you are someone that is fighting an an oppressor, let's say a regime, <laughs> um, and that you're asking questions to your uh, god uh, AI, um, and that you're asking these these questions that maybe uh, the oppressor uh, can access and can see because they're paying the company to give that access. That is actually happening right now. That's happening, sure. that's exactly why I'm saying it. It's, it's already happening with Google, with Facebook, with all the, um, all this technology that we're using. So um, it's gonna happen with AI for sure. Like, AI, like the people that control these AIs are going to be our new kings, basically, or they're becoming our new kings. Um, and they're going to have all the, all, their, all the data about us, which is what's happening already with Facebook and with Google. They already have all the data about us, and they're selling it to the highest bidder, right? Uh, so for me, I think actually CK um, and AI, they make a lot of sense, in my personal opinion. But maybe I'm too bullish. Uh, uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just, uh, let's say, too radical or too different. Um, maybe. But... Again, like I personally think that it's very important to protect what you're saying to these, let's say, search engines and so on, um, because basically they're telling the overlords the, the intention that you have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing there is, I mean, it will, be, it will take time to implement, but there are, like, you know, a, a VPN may protect you enough. You know, mm. I mean, it's it's. Sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't buy that. <laughs> no, I mean, f I mean, I mean, the, the VPN is also another lord, no? That could be access and track. Totally, the, you're you're also Cor trusting the VPN provider. Correct, correct. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, that that would be an ideal feature for sure. Yeah. When you said you're bullish on ZK, what do you mean exactly? You mean on technology, or you mean on infrastructure on ZK, or like ecosystem? I, I, I mean, I mean. Um, Basically, the use of CK as a way for me to not necessarily give all my information to the ones that are providing a service to me. So you never responded, what, what are you looking for? Or what, 
um, what do you want? Hey, what do you want? <laughs> I'm looking for tools that give, um, give, let's say, more freedom to human beings. I'm looking for tools that allow us to fight oppressors, that allow us to fight uh, the ones that are basically um, becoming authoritarian and you know trying to enslave people. Um, that's what I want. Um, I want also to have a tool where I can. Uh, I personally want to have a tool where I can have all my contacts and see the relation that I have with those contacts and the relation that they have with their contacts if my contacts want to share with me. So for example, um, imagine, this, imagine this case that you come to me and I say, uh, you say you trust me and I say I trust you and I have a list of all the people that have scammed me in the past and I'm like, Yo, bro, what the yeah. fuck? You're hanging out with this guy. Like, I can see your list. And I'm like, damn, what are you doing with this guy? Like, this guy's a scammer. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a use case, for example. Another, another uh, use case could be like, um, I can give um, to a certain, um, certain person, I can trust them with making decisions uh, on my behalf in terms of budgeting or another person in terms of uh, in terms of marketing. Um, so basically I can create like different delegation systems, but with privacy preserving uh, infrastructure. Why? Imagine that if you have a trust network, if you create a trust network, um, and basically your enemies are able to see your trust network. Stupid. Well, that, that's <laughs> social media, problem, no? yeah. Right? That's yeah. what, we have, this, uh, yeah, we have this problem when our competitors try to scan our wallets and like follow who sent us payments and try to figure out who are our clients of our hedge fund. It was huge uh, investigation. Uh, yeah. uh, so like <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nonsense, that happens no? a long way. So like it's like a way to, to uh, try to get more deals, <laughs> like out yeah, yeah. the scan chain and see like who well, is well, actually managing because, because a lot of people use an ENS and like yeah. they can understand who is that. It's, 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 it was kind of war, yeah. It, yeah, it, it, it's gonna become a war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 the problem is that no, not the problem. The other point of view is that blockchain is for transparency. So when we trade blockchain, when we use like some on-chain data, we check your wallet, how you trade on Uniswap, and then our hedge fund model is making analysis on top of your wallet. So like try to classificate it, try to figure out your trades, like put it in some of types of traders. If you trade one of tokens, we trade as a hedge fund and we build model, we build analysis on top of that. And if you start use, like trading privacy, we cannot do that. And I think blockchain feature like a transparency will be closed as a window. I, I think it depends on where you're standing, right? <laughs> like if you're hedge fund, if you analyze Uniswap, you are taking advantage of that. It's like, I mean, it, yeah. if, like that's benefit. For, that's like, I actually want to see like question about transparency and like, right? I, I, I had that question before. I don't think it's necessarily conflicting but for it sounds actually a bit contradictory. But transparency, right? Think about like what's a blockchain? It's a ledger. It's a ledger because it's public. It's every, everybody can, can can read it. That's why you trust it because you know like it's like transparent. But at the same time, we do want privacy, like you said. If you're enterprise, you actually want to protect yourself exactly from that, right? right? So it's like you can the thing. That's just like where zero knowledge comes in a lot because like you don't have to show all the process, right? You can actually maybe you can just say oh. Gob is making re really good money, like you know they have on chain like making money, but you don't have to show like how you make the money, right? Exactly right. So zero knowledge can be used to protect how you make that happen, but you can still prove or show like with transparency on the on the ledger on the blockchain saying like you've made money. So I don't think it's like like the two extreme like that opposing mm -hmm. each other. It's more like you know it can have part of transparency and part of privacy. That's why we have like almost like talking about modular or layer one, layer two. It's like something you can put on public blockchain, something you might not. Yeah, I, I see that there's a question there on the screen. Um, we're gonna go back to it. But if, if you guys have questions, go to the chat rooms, ask, ask questions there. I, I think what you were mentioning also, it's, you know, it should be out there, the information, but. Not so everything. So I think, well, not everything, but for example, trades. I think people should be able to see that X amount of tokens were traded, mm -hmm. but then you have to have the control of, okay, I want this guy to see that I am this trader, not, you know, because they track you and you have Nansen and all these tools that will basically say, okay, th this is this hedge fund. Um, 
I was talking, sorry, uh, I was talking to some regulators the other day, and they said, okay, show me all your transactions, and I'm like, here's the wallet address. This is it? Said, yeah, it's there, like, this is ours, like, you just do whatever you want. And it's like, okay, that, that's it. They, like, it's transparency, you know? Um, I don't know, like, for me, I think, uh, I think, I think we're doing it wrong. I think everything should be private by default, and that we reveal whatever we want to reveal. But yeah, I, I disagree with you because in terms of trading, for instance, if you trade on Nasdaq, and someone of company, for instance, you buy I don't know like Tesla, so you will know that Elon Musk will sell sold Tesla shares only in two days after he did. Like it's it's a law about uh, how to say it's. Uh, uh, insider trades. So like, uh, yeah, so he's like a p part of the company and he should like announce that he sold a big bunch of Tesla shares. But in crypto, if you invest in one inch, for instance, you can track one inch wallets, like one inch founder wallet, and you will see immediately if he sold. So it's like 48 hours. And I think it makes crypto more fair in terms of trading. So like even small traders who has just 500 bucks, they have same access to the information instead of uh, classic shares uh, market. Fair, fair, fair. Um, there was a slide that Vitalik um, had in Ethcon, and he said, privacy for the weak, transparency for the powerful. That's, what do you guys think? So that, I agree, first of all, is like, uh, like compared to like traditional finance, actually like defining in general, like blockchain give a lot of like equal access to a lot of like people, right? That's why, like that's like literally like DeFi is like lowering the barrier for people to like, you know, bank or to like this, like yield or a lot of like financial opportunities. So it's like, powerful people have a lot of information, a lot of resources, and you want them, you are asking transpar transparency from them. So you can kind of share or kind of equalize the level playing field. That's why like pri transparency is actually really important. Privacy is like, it's easy like a wallet, like you don't get, <laughs> you don't get frowned around basically, right? You don't get taken advantage by it. Like that's like as is actually like. So I, th I think transparency levels the field for, you know, users and big corporations because th that's where it is. And then privacy is a goal for everyone to do whatever it's best for themselves. I mean, if, if you want all your information to be private, then that's great, but you should also be able to access whatever information the big corporations mm -hmm. can access. At least like try to transfer, give you the information you can like try to make advantage of. Right. All right, all right. Um, let's go to one of these questions here in the, in the chat rooms. We saw blockchain on transparency, <laughs> but here we are asking for privacy. How do we reconcile these two? No idea. We kind of like, uh, I touch upon it in a way, it's like, we, transparency is always a good thing. It's not like if we're asking for privacy and they, we don't need transparency. That's, that's my point of view, it's like, we don't have to have to be transparent about every single thing, right? Like we can have transparency on the layer one, on the blockchain, on the stuff. We don't have to have be like transparent about every transaction you do, about every connection you have, right? So I think it's not necessarily like a conflicting two stuff. You can't, it's, I felt it's more like a, a degree of like how you're gonna make it available to everyone. So I, I think I, I think trading is the best example on this. I think the market should be able to see that a big holder of X tokens uh, sold, but not necessarily know who that uh, you know seller is. I think that that's kind of the, the the balance that is difficult to have. I mean, of course, you know, if it's someone that owns a wallet well, that owns, but that's pseudonymity. It's not really anonymity. Um, but it's I an, mean, anonymity. Anonymity and like transparency and privacy is kind of different. Anonymity is like you don't know who they are. Privacy is more about different personal private data or your like private data. It's it's like more overlapping actually than like different though. Can you explain the difference? I think anonymity is like you don't know who I am, but you can probably see what I'm doing. Like you, you could be like wallet, I see you're making a lot, but you don't actually, you can't actually identify this person. Be like, oh, this is like what dot ETH is actually. Oh, who I am. Like in real life, you can have like this disconnection between your on-chain digital life and your real personal life, right? That's anonymity. Privacy is more about how much information I want to share, I guess, 
and that can be trading, can be social, can be personal. Alex, you have any opinion? No, no, not really. Opinion. <laughs> All right, um, let's go with the other one. What's your opinion on regulation in the near future? I guess for you, the lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> should have come with my T-shirt. Um, I think that uh, crypto in general is a movement that is not going to stop. So regulators either will adapt or people will leave uh, their jurisdiction. So I know there is a lot of buzz about the US and the wars on crypto. Um, our feeling is that that will change and that there will be some reasonable regulation that will come into place to allow for uh, crypto projects to be developed in the US. Because honestly, the main point is they're losing a lot of money in tax uh, because people are leaving and they need that money. So at the end of the day, everybody will come to, to, to their understanding. I mean, Europe has done a more or less decent job in, in passing Mika that allows for some uh, regulatory certainty, some uh, service provider certainty in terms of custody, trading, and whatnot. Um, and the U.S. is falling behind. So, you know, I, th I think everybody will come to, to their senses. So you think there's going to be, a, at some point, a war on crypto? Or not really. I mean, it, it's, it's been announced. Uh, Senator Warren, I think, the, uh, did a Twitter post saying there's a war on crypto. I think they're going to lose. That's my... Who's they? Uh, the politicians that are fighting crypto because they think, well, the thing now, the thing about crypto is that they're going to lose monetary policy control, probably, and that's what they want to protect. Um, they want to protect money. Their money. Yeah. They want to protect taxes. They want to protect their budget. Is it their money or is it our money? That's, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a good question. I mean, the counter argument to your question is, uh, you know, do you use the roads, right? So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a fair balance that probably hasn't been there, but, you know, they, they're saying let's ban crypto and then, but we're going to issue a CBDC, you know, state controlled, which is like the worst case scenario in the world. So I don't know. Yeah, when I, we asked the guys who left US. So we had office in New York. Now we just have a few business developers there, but no traders. And also we used the crypto.com infrastructure to make payment salaries for like a business cards for our employees. And uh, the main point of view from outside is that crypto could be uh, designed in a free areas like a white area in the US and maybe Europe, gray area like Dubai, like probably Hong Kong, or Hong Kong will be white, we, and also black area where you can use uh, tornado cash and other stuff. So it's what we see from our point of view. Um, we have another question here. As an investor, how can one evaluate the strength of a blockchain security features? Um, that, that, due that, diligence. That, that, yeah, <laughs> due diligence. And uh, like security is actually a big thing, but it's most of like tech stuff. But honestly, I think like tech stuff is like you rely on the expert, right? At the same time, like I actually think people play a big role in it. People what? <laughs> play a big role in it because mm. people are the person who are actually developing the code, right? And I think you know it's not just about the tech or stuff. It's about your incentives, your behavior, expectation, and stuff. I think that's like one of the things people are missing a lot these days. I mean, in our case, there are a lot of service providers that will do a test and will, you know, give you a due diligence on the strength and the security. Mm -hmm. It's not. We don't have the manpower to do it. All right, uh, we got six minutes left, so. I want you guys to please give an advice to those people that are thinking about building uh, privacy-related projects. Uh, what are the type of things that you as an investor want to look at? Or let's say when they're building these projects, what is it that, what is it that uh, will actually attract you to invest into them? I mean, I, th I think we're a, a little bit of a special fund because we're focused on gaming. So, you know, tr your experience in a Web2 company that did something wrong that can be amended with privacy, I think that's a huge thing for us. Uh, advertising right now, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's broken in the gaming industry in the Web2. Someone trying to uh, fix that and kind of give back to users and whatnot. That's what I was saying. You know, I like being packaged and sent, but get some money back. Uh, I, think, I think that's a very good place to go. 
Uh, but generally, for me, uh, privacy in gaming and, and you know, we believe that assets, gaming assets will basically be a huge source of uh, wealth creation uh, down the line. Um, so pr protecting that, I think it's important. Um, so I think there are kind of two questions I would like generally define it. It's like, first of all, it's like what to build. It's like kind of you know, as investors, like what to invest. So for founders, like what to build, right? So I think there's kind of two things. First of all, it's like I would suggest people pick, like, pick a battlefield that you are more familiar with, you have more experience, you have some ideas, you have seen some problems that you want to solve, right? If you're seeing a problem, try to solve it. But at the same time, be aware of the landscape, be aware of the competition. The thing is, you might not be the first one who see the problem, and you might not be the last person to provide the solution as well. So I, I, it's kind of sad, but ideas are cheap. Executions are really expensive. Like when you have an idea and you want to execute, you want to make it happen. It's actually a lot of stuff happening. I, I admire founders who actually like build a project. But at the same time, like how you do it is like not something I can help with. It's like that's left for founders to figure out, right? And at the same time, I think I would suggest if you're actually really serious about it, think about regulation as well. <laughs> it's like different. Like that's why like people living in New York or living in the U.S. is because of regulations or because of like how the talents. And you have to be aware of that as a founder. I would suggest you look at legals, look at like, people, look at it to have precautions. Otherwise, it can, it can be it can be a late or it can be a lot of like opportunity cost to pivot in the later stage. Yeah, I totally agree with this battlefield thing you said, but I want to add that our, our venture strategy is a little bit different from others. So we invest in projects uh, which are built on top of new ecosystems like SUI, Apta, ZK, Startnet, Linear, and uh, Say, and others. So we, what I can advise if we will invest is if project picked one ecosystem and try to become the champion inside. So we invest in champions inside the ecosystem. It could be like top infrastructure project, top NFT marketplace, top DeFi, top privacy project, but inside one ecosystem and focus on that. So we believe that uh, this project has a huge opportunity and huge upside. Awesome. Um, is there anything that you guys want to add before we finish the panel? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.